Hello everyone and welcome to another tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be continuing on with our hand painted material that we were working on in the last video and we're going to be looking specifically at how we can add damage. Now in order for us to add damage we have to, uh, we have to understand how rock uh, is damaged. Um, it doesn't tend to splinter like wood. Uh, if I get an axe and I, and I hit a wood plank, um, the wood sort of splinters. Um, it will get cut in half. Now in order for me to split a stone in half I've got to hit it pretty bloody hard. For the most part stones chip and they crack and they crack and they chip because they're very hard materials um, and this is why a lot of the damage we're going to be working on is either going to be cracks caused by kind of really cold weather or it could be weaponry, it could be all kinds of stuff. Um, and we're also going to be looking at how we can add in different layers of damage so we can take any one of these particular uh, blocks and we can really kind of uh, bring out the different layers of damage that exist uh, within that. So the first thing we need to do in order to add any damage is we need to create two new layers. Now I haven't got uh, any damaged layers here and I always think it's a really good idea when we're going to add damage that we, we create a couple of new layers because uh, it just means that we can preserve the material um, and also as well we might want to add a couple of damaged layers and add different variations of damage so that when we save this out as a tileable image we can save out multiple versions of this, perhaps one version that's damaged, one version that's got different types of damage, one version that is completely shattered and this just means in a game engine we can tile all of these materials together um, but they'll, they'll look slightly different and hopefully they'll be slightly less recognizable. So the first thing we do is create two new layers. Now I'm going to call these damage lowlights or DMG for short. Everybody in games development abbreviates everything. So damage becomes DMG and highlights becomes highlights. We just call it HL to be honest. We call which means that we use abbreviations for every absolutely everything. Okay, so we're going to start with low lights. Uh, previous videos, we always started with low lights. We always created um, the shadows first, and I do this really specifically because um, it's much much easier to add highlights than it is to to, to, to add shadow. Um, if I was going to create those highlights, I mean this is because we can with the shadow layer we can use some really noisy brushes. We can use um, even kind of like mask overlay layers, um, and we're not going to look uh, at those kind of overlay layers today. What we are going to do, however, is have a look at um, some really cool brush settings that we can use to create some nice kind of chip stone. Now you'll notice over on the right hand side here I have a brush panel open. Now this can be toggled just by pressing this little uh, little paint pot icon here and this deals with any special settings that are applied to the brush that you have currently selected. Now you can see on the left hand side here I've got my paint brush selected and this means I'm going to be painting new detail. If I had my clone stamp brush selected I would have different settings over here. They would all be called the same thing but they would be applied to the clone stamp not necessarily uh, my paint brush. Now we're not going to change too much about the brush. What we are going to do is enable something called scattering. Before I do that, I'm just going to increase uh, the size of the brush because it makes it a little bit easier to see. Now, chips tend to be a little bit larger than, than your, your average splits. They tend to be quite large scale. Um, obviously, on some of these smaller smaller rocks, we're probably looking at adding in cracks as opposed to, to kind of like large areas of radiated damage. Uh, but in any case, let's have a look at what happens when I toggle on this scattering tool. Now I can click in this little box here and that will enable scattering and you'll notice here that I get a preview. Now there's nothing immediately obvious about this and this is because the scattering options have all been set to zero. Okay. Now all of these do something different. This top slider here basically specifies how much scattering actually happens. Now what we want to do is create something that looks like this. This gives us a really nice noise to the brush and it means that um, when we're painting in these kind of gradiated areas of damage we're going to get that noise and with that noise we can add some really nice effects um, in the damage highlight layer. And also as well it adds a degree of randomness and, and as with all materials being able to paint that randomness and that, that uniqueness is something that is that that's really what takes the time and the effort and the skill. To be able to do that takes years and years of practice um, and these are just some of the tips that, that you can use to kind of help yourself with that. Count 
the count slider will basically increase the the the, the amount of scattering uh, that happens. Um, and if I kind of increase both of these, you can see that there are far more scatter particles here. The more I increase that count. So as I said, we're looking for something that's quite noisy. So we're looking for something like this. The more noisy, not necessarily the better, to be honest. Um, I've never seen um, something that is completely ragged. When, when, when concrete chips or when stones chip, they tend to chip, not uniformly, that's the wrong word, but they, they tend to chip in a particular fashion and that tends to not be massively jagged. You might find if it's got um, if it's concrete with stones in it, if, if that's had a chip then you might find that uh, you might find that the damage is a little bit more random than it would be uh, for this particular example. But this doesn't have any stones in it. This is just bog standard uh, slate, or do well, not slate the material. It's just bog standard kind of brick, brick kind of paving. So we can experiment with some of these. Now I'm going to focus on on this this brick here. It would be too obvious to kind of add lots of damage to this brick here because this is going to take center stage. Um, and if we start adding loads of damage to this, we might add a few splits. But if we start adding loads of damage to this, it might become really really obvious. Um, so I'm going to start on some of the smaller bricks and then we'll kind of work our way around and maybe we'll maybe we'll think of something that we can add to this that's going to kind of make this a a feature. We want to avoid doing that where possible. Uh, but I think for this tutorial, it's going to be it's going to be okay because we're not necessarily going to be using this for a game. But for your textures, remember, the more noticeable those damage patterns are, the more re the, the less repeatable that texture is going to be before the player starts to notice it's tiled. The best tileable textures can be tiled over and over and over again and they can be used in different areas in the game without the players immediately triggering or triggering that they are that they've been used somewhere else. Uh, but I promise you in every game you've played this trick has been used. The same material has been recolored or slightly redone and put somewhere else. So, stone tends to chip from the corners, doesn't tend to chip in the middle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here and I'm very lightly, I'm going to reduce my opacity here to 25%. Remember if you're heavy handed, make sure your opacity is, is kind of between 20 and 25%. And very lightly, I'm just going to start adding in with white. I'm going to switch my canvas of course to black. And we're going to start painting in some of these details. Now I'm going to cut, I'm going to cover up the corner here, and you can kind of see that that randomness really starts to have an effect. And if you're doing this and you're thinking, actually, do you know what? I want it to be more random. Then increase this. Okay. Now, if for whatever reason you don't have this slider here, don't panic. The same option is here, and it just opens up in the same area. Okay. So some people, if you're in an earlier version of Photoshop, for instance, you might not have this bar particularly, but it is the same up here. So let's see what happens when I increase that scatter. If I increase that scatter and I continue kind of painting on here, I might do this corner over here, maybe kind of try and bridge, bridge those in here. You can really see that uh, that scattering makes it quite hard to control where a lot of that damage is happening. Now, this isn't necessarily totally a bad thing because, again, we're, look, we're talking about randomness. What we don't want is something that's uncontrollable. So if you are painting and you find it quite hard to keep this in line, and this is quite hard to keep in line, you can see this is all over the place. Um, don't be afraid, just to undo what you've done, just dial back that scattering. All we're looking for is just a little bit of noise in that edge. We're not looking for balls, alright? We don't need to paint balls into this image, unless you want to. I don't need to. So I'm going to continue here. Now we talk about gradiated damage. Um, I'm just going to continue kind of adding in some of this damage at the top here. I'm just going to continue Adding in. Don't forget to kind of like shade the previous layers, maybe kind of go over some areas and really kind of add that shadow in. A lot of this detail is not going to become amazingly obvious until we, we get the highlights on here, so don't panic. Just going to add a few more little little sections in here just to kind of make it look cool. And I think I'm going to stop before I get completely go completely overboard. So um, that's, that's kind of a, a typical kind of shadow that we might add this here. So rather than go through every single one of these, I'm going to switch straight to the, the highlight layer and I'm going to show you how we can highlight this. Now, the highlights, we don't necessarily want that same randomness. By all means, experiment with it, see what results you get, let me know in the comments down below. But personally for me, I like to have a lot of control over those highlights. Now we're going to reduce the size of uh, this brush, I'm going to go to maybe 2 pixels. And I'm going to increase the opacity ever so slightly. Okay. 
I'm going to switch my canvas so that I've got white at the foreground instead of black and I'm very carefully just going to start highlighting some of these areas. Now I'm going to start at the bottom here and really what we're looking for is to create some meaning from all of this damage. It all looks quite random but in quite a, quite a short space of time we're going to be able to create something that looks awesome here. So let's start at the bottom. So I'm going to just basically pick on a few little areas here and I'm pressing very lightly and I'm just going to where I've got big differences between highlights and lowlights. I'm just going to kind of paint on those edges. And what this is going to do is it's actually going to trick the eye into thinking that there's actually some some structured damage there. Even though it's just random, it's just kind of a an overlay of pixels that we haven't really planned anything for. I didn't paint this in, for instance. I just kind of started dabbing the brush. And we can do this all the way along here. So I'm just going to kind of add just a, just a faint highlight here just to kind of bridge this up. And then I'm going to move on to the top here. We can always add more highlight as we go, so don't panic. But we can really highlight this top. I'm not going to press too hard here. I just want to kind of create the illusion. There's something going on. There's some damage here. Remember, the players can be seeing this from a lot further away than we are, so always remember, zoom out. If you're unsure, zoom out and have a look, see what it looks like. If you don't like it, that's fine. That's not a problem. You can undo it. You can have another go. It is absolutely fine um, to not like the very first thing that you come up with. Experiment with a few different designs. See what you come up with, and really, ex really, really look for reference as well. You know, we haven't really covered reference in any of the videos yet. We are going to be looking at reference in a future video. Um, we're going to be modeling a knife. But one of the big mistakes people make when they first start using hand painted materials is they don't look for reference. You don't have to get photographic reference, but have a look at other people's hand painted textures. What kind of what kind of information have they given? you. Um, now this is by no means going to be an incredible hand painted material. The whole point of this tutorial is to show you some of the techniques not to kind of become the next Bob Ross. Um, so you know by all means have a look at reference and really play around. So you can kind of see what we end up with here. We end up kind of creating some kind of staggered detail. Um, and this is this is quite fractured. So let's have another go. Let's have another go. So I'm going to increase my brush size something like 15, that looks good. Come back down to my low light layer I'm just going to switch to black. This time I'm going to pick on maybe something something like this and I'm going to kind of make this the top half is going to kind of be shattered this time instead so need to switch to black Rob it's been a long day so we're going to do the same thing I'm going to make sure I've got my scattering enabled increase that scatter amount and I'm just going to start by painting in need to reduce my opacity so much to remember Reduce the opacity, because I, I press far too hard on the screen. So I'm just going to add some of this opacity in here, and I'm just going to start really kind of layering up kind of that gradation here. And again, I'm just going to kind of really mess this up. And again, this is this is way more extreme than I would usually go, but I just kind of want to show you that it's doable. Okay, great. So I've, this is even 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 less distinguishable. But to prove that we can turn any any details into into something usable, um, we'll stick with it. Not something I would usually put in my materials, but you really can uh, capitalize on every little mistake you make, every little detail. So I'm going to start at the top this time. So we're gonna, just going to create create a little little bridge here. Let me continue that on into here, and we're just trying to create that illusion of depth. I don't actually want it to go that far in. Maybe a bit, bit too far. Just going to create this little, little triangle here, and I'm just going to outline some of these, some of these kind of things here. See the one. I'm going to do the same here, where I've got this little noise there. I'm just going to, where I've got this contrast between the the low light and the highlight here, where I've used scatter. I can really capitalize on those and bring those forward. I could push some of these things back as well. Absolutely not a problem at all. And we end up creating some really interesting looking shapes. And that really is all this is about. You know, don't get bogged down by creating the most impressive texture that you've ever seen. Just practice the technique, practice the technique. Test yourself. You know, really really have a go at creating something and really really try and and and, and do something that you haven't done before and try and enjoy it. That's, that's why we're here. Do you know what I mean? That's why we're doing this. So really try and enjoy it. And as you see, if I zoom out here, you can see not exactly the most uh, impressive damage in the world, uh, but we can kind of, we can work with it. We can work with it. And it's just all about tricking the eye 
adding in these details here to really make the player feel like this is kind of fractured. So we've had a look at chips and I think it's important that we cover cracks because cracks are very similar. Um, the difference is, is that we don't use scatter, although we can, um, and we tend to use a slightly smaller brush. So I'm going to keep with my, my, my number two brush actually and uh, I'm going to reduce my opacity back down to about 25%. I'm going to switch um, to black. Now I'm going to use another something over here. So I'm going to put all the, the cracks over here and I'm going to have all of the other things sort of over here. So let's have a look at cracks. The key with cracks is to follow the shape of, of the tile. A lot of my students will do something like this. They'll just draw all the way down. The problem with this is that this this stops your perspective. Okay, so you see this straight line and immediately it breaks that perspective. But if we did something different, let's say the, the split starts here and ends up over here on this rock here. So let's see what happens. If I start over here and I instead of going straight across I, I follow this edge down and then when I get to this edge I kind of have a little diagonal line there in the opposite direction you see that so this is coming down this is coming over and then I'm going to maybe put in it put in a little zigzag here because everybody loves zigzags I'm just going to go over this a little bit so that we can really add some add some fine detail to this Take your time with the splits as well. If you want to, we could even we can even push this one in this direction and kind of have this start over here. But don't go overboard. But by all means have fun. Doing this here. I'm just gonna just adding a little bit of shade here. A lot of people might do this in a separate layer, but I think it's actually a little bit a little bit easier for you if you just 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 highlight this this right hand side here with a little bit of shadow. This just means when we add add that that, that damage highlight We've got something with a little bit of uh, a little bit of a little bit of detail that we can add add our highlights to. So I've switched now to white. I'm not going to change any of the brush settings. We could maybe turn scattering off, but I'm just to prove we can keep it on. Um, I'm going to kind of uh, continue this now. So on this side, I'm going to paint my little highlight. And remember, I'm following the shading. I just want to press a little bit, a little bit harder here, so I can really bring that out. Can be quite hard to see on video some of the subtleties. So maybe some of these are. Uh, Highlights might be a little bit more sharp than I would usually usually go for. And you can kind of see here if I zoom out, we end up with what looks like a crack. And if you watch the introduction to the hand painted uh, kind of techniques video, this is very similar to what we covered in that video. Even things like scratches, you know, we can add some like really stereotypical scratches to these these objects in very, very similar fashion and, and you end up with some maybe not believable but certainly interesting designs and it's, it's it's exactly the same technique wherever we go okay so I don't necessarily want any of this stuff here but I'm just trying to prove a point so your task now is to go through this hand painted material and add some of that damage in the next video we're going to be looking at how we can take all of the damage that we've created here all of the splits we've created and how we can sharpen it up and, uh, and hopefully add some color to it. I hope you've had fun and I look forward to showing you some cool stuff again soon.